Namatho Ratana Tayasa May I pay homage to Triple Zim, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening, everyone. So today is Wednesday, the 20th of uh, May 2021 and this is Achan Sujan from Warapun Meditation Centre, Aberdeen, Scotland. As usual, I'm here with you all tonight. Hello Margaret, hello Anish, hello Emma. Good evening. So today is a really cold day, all day. Raining and then wind and then cold. So it's a very cold day. I hope you're all keeping well. Right. So today again we are back to the same uh, this qualities of the Buddha. But before going into that, then uh, the uh, qualities of the Buddha, again, once again, I would like to um announce a few things that um this coming week the center is going to be very busy and that's uh, on the 23rd we are going to have uh the uh mindful interfaith mindful day and uh, on the 26th which is the six days ahead will be the Vesak celebration, celebrating Buddha's birth, his enlightenment, and uh, his passing away. Hello. Oh, Margaret. Uh, so you got the uh, haircut. Oh, okay. And Anish from Thailand. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm going to haircut in uh, how many days? Four days' time. So that haircut, I don't have to pay. I am shaving myself. <laughs> so every month I am shaving my hair by myself with the razors. Uh, and I have been kind of a barber for myself uh, over 20 years. <laughs> Sometimes I do have a big cuts, bloods. Uh, and other times, no blood at all. <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe because of that, after a year of uh, no haircut, you're getting a haircut and now uh, rains and winds. Uh, okay. Right, so, and meanwhile, I was having this coffee from Indonesia, or where is it from? Malay, uh, somewhere in Indonesia, Ivan gave it to me. It's uh, a, a animal poo. <laughs> Sounds not good. And then I just wanted to try, and it's really, really strong. And I drank only half half of a half cup of it and it's a really strong coffee i hope uh, that i will be able to sleep tonight if i can't sleep uh, then tomorrow morning teaching will be difficult uh, so i will be grumpy uh, so grumpy monk teaching will not be a nice teaching okay <laughs> Yeah, so yes, Emma. Um, okay, uh, so yesterday I asked a question. Now, what is the most... Um, anybody remember the question? What is the most important wealth? Yeah? And then the second is what is the greatest test so what is the greatest wealth and what is the greatest wealth anybody has found the answer for that or you have forgotten 
assault and freedom of text tests. <laughs> okay, right. So the story is from Alavaka Yakha, the a carnival Alavaka who asked the Buddha that if you can answer, then I will spare your life, and if you can't, then I will make my dinner. So you all uh, listening to me, unable to answer the correct answer. Now I need to make you all to be my lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> and the answer is the greatest wealth is the faith. Yeah? Greatest wealth is a faith. And then the second greatest test is the test of realization. Yeah? Which you can't compare to anybody else. So these are the two uh, initial questions that we need to remember. So what is the greatest wealth? Is wealth here the greatest wealth is the faith. And here, faith in yourself, faith in your capability, faith in your liberation that you can. So that is the greatest wealth. If you have a faith in what you are going to do, then doesn't matter how many wins or war, how many uh, troubles are there, you will strive until you get it. Because you have a strong faith in it. So you have a faith in your capability. And then meanwhile, after you're striving in such a way, you will gain the success without a doubt. Okay. So that's why the greatest wealth in every one of us should have is the faith in yourself and faith in your capability and faith to be liberated. When you have faith in yourself that I can do, somehow mind can stimulate the energy that stimulates in us to continue yeah. and it also confirms our capability to do yeah. and then success is just at the door and what's happening most of the time is that people lost their confidence and faith in their self that they can't do it they are too old or they don't know they I feel they are, they, they, it's not my cup of tea like that. In fact, the moment when you build, develop your confidence, then everything becomes perfect. Everything becomes possible. Yeah? So that is the first wealth that we have to have in us. That's the greatest wealth. And the second is the a test. The greatest test is the liberation. It is a realization of the Dhamma. And the moment when we realized it and we feel so great and it's so juicy and, and so flavor and full of flavor and you can always think of that flavor at all the time because you have fully realized it. And that realization will never change. That realization will be with you. And that also leads for the greater benefit of yourself in this life and hereafter. So, this realization is the second one, which is the test. This is the greatest test yeah? <clears throat> of all. We call them Dhamma. Dhamma rasa, yeah? Sadha rasa and Dhamma rasa. The test of the Dhamma, the test of the realization is the greatest wealth. And after hearing that, uh, Buddha was spared and he was able to convince the carnival Yaksha, the carnival Alavaka, and convert it to Buddhism. 
Similarly, there are other stories, <coughs> particular one another story that I would like to speak about because the the yesterday I was talking about the the, uh, the quality called Anuttaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati, which means impeccable teachers of gods and humans. When we talk about the impeccable uh, trainer and uh, one who is going to train someone who wish to be trained. Then there is a one another example of a, a satchaka, uh, the the disciple of uh, uh, Nigantha Putta, the Jains uh, or the uh, Jainism. And he was very good at debating, and he was good at all the knowledge and multiple understandings. And it happened that because of his pride and because of his name and fame, uh, he was beating the drums and saying that who would like to debate with him, please do come forward. And it happened that he come across with the Buddha and he wanted to have a discussion or debate with the Buddha. And he invited the members of the public to go and see the Buddha that he is going to de you know, debate with the Buddha and going to defeat. And obviously, the, the Satchaka was very famous debater and one very famous, uh, um, one a, a person who is knowledgeable. After hearing his announcement, people walked and you know people went, followed him following uh, to the temple and after meeting the Buddha he simply you know with uh, respect said to the Buddha that I'm here to debate with you would you permit at that time the Buddha said so be it put your fo put your question forward uh, and then he asked the question uh, to the Buddha saying that what do you teach and how do you teach to your disciples and the Buddha said that oh I teach that a form is changing inconstant feeling is inconstant perception is inconstant formation is inconstant consciousness is inconstant this is how I teach Hello, good evening, Yvonne. Thank you for your coffee. And thank you for your help. That coffee is really strong and making me sleepy. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, after that, uh, a Buddha said so and then he, he disagrees saying that how could it be and our, and our form is belongs to me feeling is belongs to me perception is belongs to me uh, then um, and after that a Buddha said can I ask you a question and then he said that in the country like a kings or the prime ministers will order things in the in the country and they take in charge of things is that right and the satchaka agigvesana said that that is true that the kings or the prime ministers will take in charge about the uh, affairs of the country and then in that case do you think that you can take control over your form do you think that you can take control over your feelings? So Buddha goes on asking one after another that you have no control over this body at all. You have no control over these feelings at all. Perception, formation and consciousness. Because these are inconstant and you can't control. And things that you can't control how could you proclaim that it is belongs to you? So after Buddha said so, 
that Buddha further on saying that a good disciple will not take this form, feeling, perception, formation and consciousness as belongs to me, as belongs to uh, such and such person, but it will take as the entity which is inconstant, suffering and is uh, insubstantial. So, with that, uh, uh, Sachaka was, although he was very arrogant and stubborn, you know, you know full of uh, arrogant feelings, and uh, he was in you know, a confidence that he would defeat the Buddha, but with the questioning of that, uh, with the wisdom that Buddha used and related to uh, the, uh, his own life, he was given up his uh, thought of debate or thought of a conquering. And that's how Buddha tamed, by using their own words. His own word, you know, taming the uh, Satchika Brahmana. And he invited the Buddha along with the monks to the temp uh, to to his dom uh, to this uh, to his monastery, and offer a dana. Yeah. So that is another story. And there was another one more story. I think I would like to uh, now tell you uh, is about the um, it's called angry Brahmin, yeah. one of the Brahmins. The story was that. He was born Brahmin and never you know, accepted the Buddha and his disciples as someone who is worthy of respect. But somehow his wife became a follower, follower of the Buddha and began to offer a dana, offer a alms food. And that really upset uh, her husband, the Brahmin. And then one day he come down and you know, tried to shout and a shout to the Buddha. And this is again what happened. And uh, this is, I have experience here in Aberdeen too. In, when, uh, in 2011, when I came for the first time uh, and, um, and then stayed in a temple, uh, with, uh, we were three monks staying in uh, Hamilton Place in Aberdeen. It was the starting time of the temple. And then later, after uh, four or five months later, and uh, I stayed alone um, for a couple of months, a couple of good months. And then during that time, I was running a retreat. Uh, and then there were uh, two ladies observing a sealer and uh, meditating. And on the last day, I was invited uh, by a lady, a Thai lady, for uh, house blazings and house blazings and lunch, she had a great faith and a great uh, devotion to the Buddha, uh, to Buddhism and monks. So she wanted to invite the monks for the blessings, and I was alone. But however, I accepted the invitation, and what happened was that her husband wasn't happy. Yeah. And her husband was very ferocious, and he even came to uh, the center, you know, and shouted and shouted, uh, you know, tell, uh, told me off that if you come to my house, you know, and blah blah blah, you know, goes on. Uh, and I remember that these two nuns who were supposed to be observing precepts and meditating calmly. They couldn't bear of his swear words, and these ladies began to swear by themselves too, you know, swearing, like, Oh, you're talking to a Buddhist monk, our master, how dare you speaking? And then they even talk in a f f f f. And I was telling these two nuns, Take your time, you're on a meditation, hold your breath. <laughs> Be calm, be patient, yeah, like that. So, and eventually I uh, got, uh, and I, I spoke with him, and, I, and then I spoke with his wife, and I cancelled it, and yet again, you know, he came back again with his son, uh, to you know, basically saying that, don't dare to visit his house, you know, like that. 
So this is same happened uh, during the time of the Buddha. That uh, this Brahmin's wife was so devoted you know, and wanted to uh, offer the, the, the food to the monks at all the time, and his this and uh, her husband became very angry and came to the Buddha in the temple, like he came to me. And he shouted, and he talk and talk and talk and shouted and shouted. So this Brahmin was shouting to the Buddha every possible nasty word. And Buddha was quietly listening, said nothing, yeah? quietly listening. And now here, when you are debating or when you are arguing, if a person is not replying, the, the argument will automatically subside because you need a fuel, only then the fire will burn, continue. Now suppose a person is not replying and a person who is argue, or not arguing or shouting will run out of words eventually. And this has happened to this Brahmin when he was shouting to the Buddha. And after he he went silent and he you know he, he, he asked, Why aren't you so angry? Angry at me? And the Buddha said and the Buddha gave a simile saying that Brahmin suppose yeah, suppose you got the guests in your home and you have prepared delicious food to welcome your guests and after that after your your guests have arrived you have presented to your guests but your guest didn't eat what would you do oh what a silly question a brahmin said yeah oh what a silly question you are you know, such a learned person you didn't know that you know, if I offer this food to them and they didn't like it, they didn't take it, obviously that belongs to me. Yeah, obviously that belongs to me. How silly question is that? Brahmin said to the Buddha. And the Buddha said, That's right, Brahmin. All what you have said, all these nasty words that you have said, I don't want. Take with you. Take it with you. And that made him so humble. Uh, he felt very you know, ashamed by his own words. So then he said, okay. Now he realized that the Buddha was worthy of respect. Uh, and he tamed angry person by being silent. You know, quietly smiling. And that's how he tamed. Wish I could have tamed this man in Aberdeen, but he wasn't ready, or I wasn't, you know, patient enough to teach this guy. Yeah? So, this is the angry Brahmin uh, who was so angry at the Buddha, uh, tamed him by being silent. Yeah? So that's how uh, the Buddha became. One who can tame somebody who is very difficult to be tamed. And he wasn't just a taming a, a human beings. He was taming the gods. He was taming an elephant as well, the animals. Like there was one animal who was very, you know, who was drunken and, uh, and uh, dis deployed uh, along the way where, where the Buddha was going for arms around, thinking that this and this elephant will kill the buddha and the buddha stood there and channeled uh, the kindness so called metta loving kindness towards this elephant and by the power of this loving kindness uh, the channeling this loving kindness it is said uh, that this elephant's drunken uh, madness just dispelled and just bowed down to the buddha but remember, if you ever see any animals are coming towards you, do not dare thinking that I am sharing a loving kindness, so I am not going to run away. No, you should run. <laughs> Don't be in that position as the Buddha did. Okay, We can't compare 
the kindness, the loving kindness uh, quality to the Buddha. Yeah? So you better run. <laughs> Otherwise you will be crushed to death. Yeah? So that is another story. Similarly, uh, uh, the, there was a, um, uh, the celestial beings who was also very arrogant and very stubborn. And Buddha simply uh, taught him by extending his size, you know, uh, and then that's how he able to tame the celestial being. So that's why Buddha was the impeccable trainer to the animals, to the celestial beings, and to the human beings. And that's how he is known as impeccable trainer in this sense. In Pali, it's called Anuttaro Purisadhamma Sarathi. Yeah? So this is, which number is that now? Oh, starts from Arahang, Samma Sambuddho, Vijja Charana Sampanno, Sugato Loka Vidu, Anuttaro Purisadhamma Sarathi. The sixth one. Okay? Sixth one. No, sorry, seventh one. This one is the seventh one. And now we have another two to go. So I will end here for tonight's talk and may you all be well and happy. Bless you. Uh, may the Buddha Dhamma Sangha bless you for the good and healthy life and safety for you. In a few moments time we are going to have evening chanting and guided meditation. We'll see you shortly. Thank you for your all interaction. And may you all be well and happy. See you shortly. Satu.